crashed Novaria. Just made it down to the engineering section. I'm going to talk to Tally and see if any new dialogue options have opened up for these guys. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, it looks like they are have been. Good to see you smiling again, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Sterin's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies. And they're not above using me to get to him. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian's ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Seren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the Veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Saren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now, I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago. Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with. And he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously. Even when he was around, he always seemed a bit distant. Like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, I know he cares about me, but he never really showed it. Not in the usual way. 
I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Okay, I think the rest, we, yeah, we've already talked about everything else, so... I should go. Okay, hopefully that gives us some experience. See you later. Yeah, it gave us 100 experience for doing that. I don't think Adams... Something I can do for you, Commander. Yeah, no. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye. Okay. Uh, let's talk to Rex, Ashley, and Garrus, and see if they've got anything else opened up. Shepard. So you'd rather be a merc than help your people? I'm a fighter. It's what I do. Aren't you at all worried about what will happen to the Krogan? What the hell do you want me to do about it, Shepard? I'm tired of sticking my ass on the line and getting nothing for it. So you're just giving up on your people? I gave up on fighting for a lost cause. I'm not like you, Shepard. I'm no hero. Bottom line, Oops. killing for credits simplifies things. You ever think about helping your people? I try not to. But there's a lot of Krogan mercs out there. I'm always running into them. Half the time I'm being paid to kill them. But that's just part of the job. You don't get to pick who your enemies are. How long have you been a merc? Long enough. I took my first contract right after I left my home system. It's good work, but it doesn't kill you. I get the feeling you enjoy your work. Sure. You get to see the galaxy on someone else's credits, and most days end with a good fight. I've tried more organized fighting, private armies and such, but it gets too messy. I fight best on my own, or in very small groups. I don't like people relying on me, and I bloody well don't like relying on them. Okay, sorry about that. I'm actually at work. Uh, we spoke about that, that, that. Okay. So long, Rex. Shepard. And I went, I did go through all the lockers and make sure everybody's stuff that was uh, upgraded, so. Commander? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure, if you have time. Figured you'd be busy with tactical briefings and whatnot. Don't know what I think about us attacking today, of all days. Kind of an ill omen. You mean on the anniversary of the first contact war? The end of it, yeah. My family always marks it. I'm the only Williams here. I guess you'd be the only other one interested in it. Seems like an odd thing to celebrate. That was 26 years ago. In our family, it's not really a celebration, more like an obligation. Don't tell me you don't know about my family. My commanders always find out. It's not in my files or something? There's almost nothing in your files. Technical scores and a list of crap assignments. There's a reason for the crap assignments. I'm General Williams' granddaughter, the commander of the Shanxi garrison in the war. The only human ever to surrender to an alien race I see. That's why you drive yourself so hard. A Williams has to be better than the best, if only to avoid suspicion. That's what my dad told me the night before he retired. It takes a special kind of thick-headed to march into a job where your family's blacklisted. I did it anyway. I'm not gonna let our name go down with Arnold and Quisling. Granddad deserved better than that. What happened to your grandfather after the war? He was relieved of command as soon as Shanxi was liberated. They brought him back to Earth in irons, but there was never a trial. They quietly demoted him and stuck him behind a desk. He retired a year later and spent the rest of his life working construction in the colonies. Sometimes we hear about attempts to get him exonerated in some official way. Nothing ever comes of it. As I recall, your grandfather held out for a long time. The Turians wrecked the orbitals in the first wave and occupied the major cities. They sat in orbit, dropping rocks on anything that moved. Grandad dispersed the troops, but when they went into the cities for supplies, the Turians would wreck a block to eliminate one fire team. Civilians were dying, his troops were starving, and he couldn't contact Alliance High Command. So he surrendered the garrison. He refused to sacrifice his men just to save face for humanity. 
You planning to throw yourself on a sword to save face for him? Would it make a difference? He's gone now. Dad's gone too. And who would it impress? I'll never be good enough for the Alliance. So now you know. Gonna kick me off the ship, Skipper? Nah, you get really hot in the later games. You're a valuable part of my crew, Williams. If I want an opinion from the head, I go to Elenko. When I want one from the heart, I go to you. I also play a mean game of pool. But anyway, I've got things to do before we land. I'm sure you do too. What's your opinion of the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Skipper. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It was yours. You know, you really should talk to Jasoni about her mom. She has to be hurting. Just saying, Skipper. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. So yeah, there's 200 experience that we didn't have before. We'll talk to Garrus, and then we'll head up Commander, to... Commander, I... What can I do for Liara? Something bothering you? It's Aaron. I'm starting to wonder whether we'll ever find him. He's always one step ahead of us, and he's got those damn geth. We're getting close, Garrus. We'll find him. I wish I had your confidence. I just can't stand the thought of him getting away with everything he's done. <coughs> I know you're doing everything you can, and if anyone can catch him, it's you, but if there's anything else I can do to help, anything, just tell me what you want me to do, and I'll do it. I understand your concern, but we will find him. Just make sure you're ready to go when we do. Yes, ma'am. You can count on me. Thanks for hearing me out. I appreciate it. Can I ask you something, Commander? What is it? Are you worried that the Council might be protecting Saren? I mean, they were really dragging their heels before. What if we find him, bring him back to the Citadel, and they refuse to act? I get the feeling this isn't a question. Speak your mind, Garrus. Well, maybe we shouldn't give them the chance, Commander. In my opinion, Saren's too dangerous to be kept alive. Too much could happen. He could escape, or the Council might let him go. If we find him, when we find him, I say we make sure we stop him, permanently. If Saren won't listen to reason, if he forces my hand, I'll kill him in a heartbeat. But only if it's absolutely necessary. But what's the point in keeping him alive? It just gives him an opportunity to escape or convince the Council to listen to him. And what about the Geth? They might try to free him. We know more about Saren's plans than anyone. But what do we really know? If we just kill him, we lose the chance to find out. Yeah, I see your point. Do you really think there's more to know, other than the fact that he's a raving lunatic? Maybe, maybe not. But it's not a chance I'm willing to take. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think I'm going to pick up the video whenever I'm in front of Liara, just to save a little time. Sorry, this. I hope you guys want these, uh, want this part of the video where I'm just going and talking to the crew, because um, if you guys haven't played it, then obviously this is kind of a key portion. Um, kind of like in Skyrim, where if you don't talk to people, then you can't ever unlock this stuff, So, um, like the little secret mission. So anyway, I'll pick it up in the next video. Thanks for watching. And I'll just do a transition to kind of get us to... Uh, the last video to, well, it'll be the same video whenever I do my thing. Um, so I'm compressing the last video, I'm streaming with Fraps, and I'm running Mass Effect, so hopefully my computer doesn't melt. But, uh, yeah. lara has got to do her little look thing. This is like a whole process for her. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be, before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. The best of your mother lives on in you. Her determination, her intelligence, her strength. That is kind of you to say. I appreciate your concern, but I am fine. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with you until the end, Shepard. I like talking with you, Liara. No matter what the subject. You have been very understanding with me, Shepard. Very patient. I appreciate that. I know there are some strange beliefs about my people. I am familiar with the legend of Asari promiscuity. But those rumors have little basis in fact. Oh, damn. When one of my people joins with an individual from another species, it is a very deep and spiritual exchange. We do not enter lightly into a union. 
Where's the option for a deep exchange? <laughs> oh, gosh. You make it sound almost mystical. A true union goes far beyond an ordinary melding. It is a connection that transcends the physical universe. Two become one. Thoughts and senses merge, identities intertwine. Memories and emotions weave themselves together, becoming entangled in a single, rapturous whole. It is unlike any other experience. In some cases, it can be a truly life-changing event. It sounds amazing. Are you saying... No! Oh, no! Uh, I am not very good at this, am I? I'm sorry, Shepard. I am trying to explain why I have been so... reserved. The Union is more than just sex. It is the lifeblood of my species, the way we Asari evolve and grow as a society. That is why I have never... Uh, I mean, that is why we must choose our partners with great care. I want you to be absolutely sure about this, Liara. I am only 106, barely an adult by Asari standards, and I spend most of my time absorbed in my research. I never really thought about it. Not until I met you. You are very special to me, Shepard. But with all that's happened, Saren, the Geth, the Reapers, I do not know if we are ready for this. These are dark times, Liara. Maybe once all this is over. I'm glad you understand, Shepard. There is too much at stake. We need to put aside our personal feelings and focus on stopping Saren. I wish it did not have to be that way. But we all have to make sacrifices. Let's... let's talk about something else. Wait a minute, what just happened there? Do we need to go find Caden? Because he's gonna give us some booty. Uh... I don't know if I just screwed the pooch on that. Hopefully not, because I chose all the Paragon stuff, but... I should go. We will see. Goodbye, Shepard. I just had a curiosity. I get the feeling you want to ask okay. me something, Commander. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Mm, kind of worry about that. Not really sure if that kind of messes up the uh, the sex man's or not. Let's see how pissed he is. Oh, he's pissed. Did you see what he did? Anything you need, Commander? About Liara. Is everything all right? I'm not in high school anymore, Shepard. I'm disappointed, sure. But you made your choice. I'll do my duty. Don't worry about that. You're a good man, Caden. I'm sorry it didn't work out. Just forget it, okay? Like Pascal said, the heart has its reasons, which reason cannot know. She seems like a nice girl, man. I hope things work out between you two. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? I didn't figure you'd have time to talk with all that's going on. I mean, there are reports to file, on the Rachni and on Analeus. The paperwork will keep. Something on your mind? I'm just looking for an ear. That a briefing wasn't the right place to say how ridiculous this is. Seems like every other race in the galaxy is wrapped up in their own problems. They don't want to see what's coming. Wanting to believe everything will be fine? Sounds like human nature to me. Yeah, I guess some things carry across species well enough. I should remember that after what happened with Vernus. I'd think you'd carry a grudge over the crap he took from Vernus. Before I met Vernus, I knew as much as any other civilian. Aliens were weird, superior, and tried to tell us what to do. I mean, it's only been 26 years since first contact. That's not a lot of time to understand them. But it was Vernus who made me see how human aliens are. They're not different or special. They're jerks and saints, just like us. Hell, by the time I got payback, I don't even want it anymore. I don't see you snapping very easily. What finally did it? He hurt Rana. Broke her arm. She reached for a glass of water instead of pulling it biotically. She just wanted a drink without getting a nosebleed. You know? Like an idiot, I stood up. Didn't know what I was gonna do. Just something. And Vernus lost it. Beat the crap out of me. Kept shouting how they should have bombed us back to the Stone Age. And that's when the knife came up. A military issue talon, right in my face. I cut loose, full biotic kick right in the teeth. Almost as strong as I can manage now. At 17, that's something. You wanted to help a girl you cared for. 
That's a noble thing. Maybe my intentions were noble, but I... I lost control. I killed him, Shepard. Snapped his neck. They probably could have saved him if they got him to an infirmary quick enough. But they didn't. Caused a stir when they shipped him home. Bot training was shut down. Kinetics folded a couple of years later. So, yeah, maybe I hated that Turian. I mean, if one ass was enough to judge a whole race, I'd hate humans too. A reasonable stance. Keep that level head and we'll do fine. Staying reasonable is about all we've got left. Everyone else in this galaxy seems to have gone out of their minds. Present company accepted, of course. Okay. I'm not sure if we got the other option. Yeah, yeah, this one. What's your opinion on the last mission? Killing Saren and Saren. It was been as anyway. Second in command? Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back. I'm sure Dr. Desaunt is hurt. Okay. How did he kill her own mom? Any opinion on the rack knife? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the council. We weren't out here during the rack knife war. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander? Okay. And like I said, I've gone through all the lockers and upgraded everybody's stuff. It is time to head to the bridge. Actually, we got... Oh, dang it. Freaking A. These elevators. Spoke to all these guys. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do at this point, and I don't know why you have to do this, but you have to walk out and then walk back in. Um, I think what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to head to the galaxy map and probably going to do an assignments mission. Um, actually, scratch that. I'm gonna head to the Citadel, get rid of a ton of crap that we have stored in our inventory with the old trick where you know you sell and you buy back and you get some money, whatever. Uh, we're gonna outfit our guys with even better stuff. Um, yes, Commander. Nothing there. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. Uh, let's hit Joker. Make sure he doesn't have anything worthwhile to say. It is Seth Green, so he's always got something to say. No little icon things to click on. Okay. Why am I glad to be off of Novaria? I don't know which was worse, the cold or the corporations. One will freeze your balls off, the other will sell them out from under you. <laughs> with all due respect, Commander. I'm not sure if we've done this one before. I'd like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this goes. Uh, okay. Top of my class in flight school, I... Yeah, we've already done this. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'm... Alright, see ya. Alright, see ya. Okay, so we're gonna head to the Citadel. And unload a whole bunch of crap. Presley, you look like a douche. And my voice is really low because... Good timing, Commander. Commander. We got a transmission coming in from the Citadel. Top priority clearance. Is it the Ambassador? It's not his signature. I think it's from the Council. I'll patch it through to the Commander. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Very interesting. Commander Shepard, we've received information that may be critical to your mission against Saren. I'll take all the help I can get. We've received an urgent message from one of our infiltration regiments in the Traverse. You mean spies? Spectres tend to attract attention, Commander. But they are only one arm of the Council. Special task groups are often a better option for monitoring developing situations. We currently have several infiltration units scattered throughout the border regions of Citadel space. This particular unit was gathering intel on Saren. What did they find? Unfortunately, the message we received was little more than static. The infiltration team must be in a situation where they can't set up proper interstellar communications. But the message was sent on a channel reserved for mission critical communications. Whatever they were trying to tell us, we know it was important. Considering your interest in Saren, we thought you might want to investigate this. Find out what happened to our team. The signal originated from the planet Vermeer. I'll look into it. The Council prefers not to become involved in the specifics of Spectre activities. We only want you to be aware of all your options, including Vermeer. Good luck, Commander Shepard. We will keep you advised if we learn anything else. Okay. We are still going to go to the Citadel to uh, outfit our stuff.
Up area check. And I'm not sure if we've gone to. Oh, we do need to go to Strandus eventually. So I'll probably the next video I do, I'm probably going to do a um, uh, an assignments uh, episode. Just because there's a lot of assignments we got to get caught up on. Message coming in. Patching it through. Commander, I'm glad you're in the area. We've got an emergency situation, and you're the only one I can trust to get the job done. How can I help, Admiral? Bionic fanatics have hit a medical research station with a psychotropic drug. The drugs have temporarily driven researchers crazy, and the biotics are effectively using them as human shields. So if I shoot everything that moves, a lot of researchers are gonna die. Exactly. A normal team could handle the biotics, but a lot of innocent researchers would die during the operation. That's why I contacted you. I'm hoping you can keep the casualties to a minimum. I'll do everything within my power to bring those researchers back safely, Admiral. I know you will, Commander. I'm sending you the station coordinates now. Fifth lead out. switch and do a uh, Liara and uh, Tally. Since uh, Liara is my love interest. You know what, actually, instead of making you guys just walk, watch me walk around, uh, I think I'm going to call the video right now. I'll pick it up whenever I've uh, gone through all the weapons, the ammo, etc. Uh, and gotten all my, my guys uh, outfitted the way I want. So I think this is going to be my new team. You guys let me know in the comments if um, if you've got a specific... Wow, look how balanced that is. Uh, if you guys have a specific squad you want me to select. Um, and obviously uh, like and subscribe to my channel. It's all it's uh, really appreciated. I'm up to 10 subscribers. haven't even really done anything to promote it. So really appreciate you guys subscribing. And I hope you enjoy the videos. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching.